So last time for this um, this project that I've been working on, uh, I implemented a nearest neighbor classifier, and uh, I, I saw both manually and through the scoring that I'm right about 70% of the time. Um, and in this video, I want to try to improve that some. So one of the problems we have is when the two axes are very different scales, right? So you can see that on the x-axis, we go from about negative 2 to positive 2, whereas along the y-axis, we go from about negative 40 to positive 40. And so one of the implications is that what looks close to each other uh, uh, to a human might not actually be close to each other with respect to the math. So l let me just give a concrete example. Looking at this orange point right here, this orange point is about a distance of a little less than two, right, between this uh, orange and blue, right? Because roughly the same y-axis and then the x-axis is about a difference of two. What about the distance between uh, these two points? Well, they're kind of close to each other on the x-axis, but on the y-axis I see, wow, these are really about uh, a distance of 10. Right, so, so this kind of weird case, while well, these two points are closer to each other than these two points. And, and so what I'd like to do is rescale this in some way, right? Can I, um, can I kind of divide the both axes by something so that it's more uniform? And you can imagine I could uh, divide, divide the min and max. So maybe I divide the, the vertical dimension by 80, another one by four. What's trying to work a little bit better, or at least a little more standard, is dividing by the standard uh, deviation. And so what I want to do is I want to build a, a, a transformer that will do that for us, right? And so if I went back to that whole page about estimators, uh, there's some information here as well about, uh, about if I go up here, about these transformers. Basically, I have to have a transform method, and then also we're going to generally have a, a fit method because we want to do it uh, based on uh, some properties of the data, right? So I may I'll be a, both an estimator and a transformer. So let me head back here, and I may create a new um, a new class to do this. I'm gonna say class, uh, maybe I'll call it scalar or something like that. And I may have an empty empty constructor there. And then my two methods I need to have is I need to have a, a fit, and uh, and for the fitting, I may have an X really, and uh, or whatever, I'll have some stuff there. And then we have a separate transform where I transform this data. Okay. And and so how will I call this? Well, uh, if I look at my data frame, I guess it's called, um, yeah, my trading data frame. What I really want to do is just kind of uh, fix up these uh, X values, right? So what I want to look at is, uh, is this, X1 and X2. Okay. So that's what I'm going to feed at. I'm going to say, have this new scalar. And I'm going to say s.fit to that data. Just like so. Okay. And, uh, and of course, I always need myself here. All right. So, so one of the first things I want to do is I want to uh, make sure all my data is, um, is kind of a NumPy array again, right? I'm passing it a data frame, but I want to have some sort of a consistency there. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say uh, x equals check array. This was one of the, the functions we used last time that sanity checks that this is reasonable and converts it to a numpy array. And then, then the same thing down here when I'm actually doing transformations later. So I'm going to do just like that. And, uh, and then in this fitting part, my only job is to figure out what the standard deviation is. Right? So I could do that like um, Maybe I'll say this. I'll say self dot standard deviation equals s dot standard, and uh, and maybe I'll just um, let me. I want to look at a few things here, so I can actually troubleshoot what's going on. Right. So there's the data I'm working with, and, and maybe for now, uh, I will just put off what that is. So maybe I'll just say, well, what is s dot standard deviation. And uh, the same thing before, uh, it's a convention to have this underscore. Also a convention to return myself here. So I'm going to do that. And I get one number, which is not what I was looking for. I wanted to have really two numbers. I want to have a standard deviation for this column and the standard deviation for this column over here. And so when I do this, 
well, there's different ways, right? I mean, I, I think I could say like access equals one, and that would be doing a bunch of, um, you know, one is across, that'd be a bunch of uh, horizontal standard deviations. I get a whole bunch. If I want to go down, that's zero. And now I just get these two numbers, which is great. And so now my transform is not too tricky, right? I can just uh, divide here. I can return x divided by uh, self dot whatever those standard deviations are. Great. So so if I want to now, I could say um, you know s dot transform, and I could have that same data here, and uh, and that works great, right? It's kind of rescaling. You see, all the numbers are kind of closer to uh, zero now on both sides. Um, and uh, and then later, what I might also want to do is I might want to do a transformation on my test data. And so the important thing, right, is that it would be wrong to uh, to refit on my test data. I want to just do that once on what I know up front, and then use that standard deviation to rescale both of these. Because when I'm doing my test data later, or actually, you know, making a live prediction, I might only have one row, right? So I can't fit there. I can only fit on my training data. Now, since I'm doing the fitting and transforming on, on both my uh, on my trading data, um, there's often a shortcut that people will do, which is fit underscore transform. And that just does both. It first calls fit and then it calls transform. And if I wanted to, I could uh, write that from scratch. But an easier way will be to inherit from the transformer mixin that comes with uh, sklearn. And, uh, and I may have to import that way up at the top as well. If I had way back here, uh, not quite way back there, I guess it's right here where I had my base, right? I want to do that as well. That's going to give me that for free. Uh, inheriting is great, right? You can uh, try to get all these things for free. Um, and great, so that's kind of rescaling my data. And if I wanted to, I could then use this to feed into my um, feed into my uh, nearest neighbor data, uh, my nearest neighbor model. That would do a little bit better. Now, the easiest way to do this, right? I mean, I could try to capture this in some like, you know, scaled uh, uh, DF, something like that. The easiest way to do this is maybe with a pipeline. And so I'm gonna head up here again to where I have all my imports and I'm gonna say uh, from uh, sklearn.pipeline import pipeline. And what I could do with the pipeline is create a system where I automatically scale the data and then feed it to my nearest neighbor. Right, so I'm gonna actually maybe just comment all of this out for now uh, and delete this. I'm gonna create a pipeline like this. And uh, it's a list of stages. My first stage is that I want to scale the data. And the way these things work is that I have a bunch of things like this where I have a name and then, you know, whatever the stage is. And maybe the stage is something that's either doing transformation or maybe it's um, uh, maybe it's doing prediction. Right, so I have a couple of these things. I know the stage ends with the nearest uh, neighbor, right? So I'm going to say nearest, uh, oh, nearest uh, neighbor. There we go. One of those. And then the first thing is going to be my scaling, which will be the scaler that I built. Great. So there's my pipeline. And, uh, and I can use this just like I, I earlier did these things, right? I can do my fitting and scoring just like that. So I'm going to say, here I'm going to say fit. I'm going to use my pipeline, right? So this will automatically for me take this, feed it through the scaler, and then feed the output through my nearest neighbor. So I, I can do that, and, uh, and it's very much complaining. Fit takes two positional arguments, but three for, were, for, uh, were given. Uh, where where did that happen at? So here I was doing a fit here, and then uh, and then here you can see that they're on uh, the transformers doing this fitting. So this transformer actually refers to my scalar object, and so this is just kind of a silly thing. Uh, for the fitting, you have to pass in both an x uh, and a y, uh, and that's useful for some transformers, but not for ours because we aren't actually doing anything with the y. So this is something I'll do. I'll just do this to make the transformer happy and then ignore that. So I'm going to do that. And now I can see I'm really beating what I had before. Before, where I had, um, here, actually the easiest way is I can just comment this out, right? 0.7, I'm right 70% of the time without the scaling. When I take that into account, well, now I'm up to 70, uh, 78%. And really, after I built my pipeline, 
the training and, and kind of the evaluation on the test data set wasn't any more complicated than before. So this is really a nice way to construct things. And so in your projects, you can always think about, well, can you build your own uh, transformers? Um, can you build your own estimators? Then how can you fit them together in a pipeline? And then once you've done all those things, the rest is uh, pretty easy. Both these things I've done, the scaling and, and the nearest neighbor are things that are already baked into uh, SKLearn, right? You can find those if you want. Um, I just wanted to show how to build them from scratch in this demo.